boys and girls, Doug Childs here. It's Warriors, Rich. And Wild Man. What's happening, Doug? Hey, we're looking at uh, seven things that you and I loathe about El Diablo. Seven things we hate about Satan. Uh, our first podcast touching this topic, we talked about how Satan accuses the brothers. It's his job, and uh, we shouldn't listen to him because he's this thing called a liar. That's so right. When Satan calls and tells everybody, you know, that, hey, you're a sinner, you're unworthy, freaking agree with them. Uh, say that that should bring comfort to your soul because Christ died for the unworthy and Christ yep. died for the sinner. So again, you know, just turn it on him because he's going to come at you with it. So it's just spiritual jujitsu, folks. Get used to it. Then we looked at, uh, Rich, the temptation to apathy. And so, uh, you know, when people put in the totemic view of sins, I don't think a lot of people see apathy as, you know, like a, a bad thing. You know, no, it's homosexuality. Don't. It's chicken fried steak. It's Drinking Coors Light. Yeah, that's that's all you know that the you know the fundamentalist and you know fundamentalist stands for no fun, mostly dumb and quite mental. That's all they see as vices. They don't see you know sloth as being a vice. Uh, but the church, they they're about as active in regards to saving culture and uh, righting wrongs uh, as a manatee is swimming in warm goo in the intensified gravity of the planet Jupiter. They're apathetic, you know. Yeah, manatees on Jupiter. Quesara, sera, whatever will be, will be. Jupiter. But that's not Bible, folks. That's called apathy. And uh, again, classically, you know, was defined as sloth. And it was one of the whopper sins. All right, so now we're looking at uh, the third temptation, the third thing uh, that we hate about Satan. And it's the temptation, again, not a not a not a big one on the, the radar of a lot of Christians, and they excuse it away day after day after day. It's the temptation, it's the sin to passivity. Mm. Being passive. I don't, did you ever follow, uh, uh, or did you read about the Welsh Revival in the early 1900s? Yep. So there's this chick uh, named Jessie Penn Lewis, and uh, she's kind of like a reporter in regards to what was going down uh, there in Wales and, and uh, how God was moving and, you know, just pretty much documented everything that was going down. Then it went rogue. Then it got real weird and uh, demons got inv <laughs> demons got involved, according to Jesse, and uh, just some bizarre manifestations and a lot of uh, uh, too enthusiastic type believers doing just weird kooky stuff that we've all seen in charismatic circles. But she wrote a book called War on the Saints, and uh, it's it's kind of like walking through mud, a little lugubrious on the reader and stuff. But there's one chapter in there uh, called The Chief Grounds of Possession. And uh, she said that the way that this thing got hijacked by the powers of darkness is that people were just passive. And she said they were passive, you know, in their mental faculties. They were just mm. allowing things to happen to them. And uh, again, it's a pretty technical kind of hoodoo voodoo type book and uh but that chapter i thought it was interesting it's like if you're going to be passive if you're going to just let ideas come to you or thoughts come to you or or manipulations come to you then uh satan's going to run roughshod over your life and i right. thought you know what that's that's a that's a great point if you don't resist uh the devil then guess what he's not going to flee and the bible doesn't say ignore the devil it says resist and so passivity and that's active. basically that's active Exactly. And look, passivity is basically you just you just let whatever happen, you know, happen to you. And well, uh, you people's idea. Sorry, Doug. People's idea of resisting is like clenching their teeth and their fists and tightening up and just sitting there like I'm going to resist. That's not resistance. Resistance is active. It's action. It's not sitting there. You got to make something happen. Right. You know, we talk about uh, men all the time and, you know, what makes a good guy and my whole refrain from my book pussification provider protector hunter and hero uh robert knight he had one uh i think it, the book was called uh the making of a knight uh k-n-i-g-h-t mm -hmm. and he said a, a real a real man will uh accept responsibility reject passivity lead courageously and expect a reward and again, on. when you're talking, when you're talking about, you know, it's like what makes a man a man? It's like, well, first of all, 
He's not freaking passive. He's not a doormat. He ain't going to just let crap happen to him. Uh, he's, go- <laughs> he's going to be active. He's going to resist. And you're right. going to feel... You're going to feel that resistance if it's lies, hype, and spin, stupidity, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's what Joshua was talking about in uh, Joshua 24 when he says to the people, he says, hey, who are you going to serve? Choose this day whom you will serve. And then he gives some options, you know, whether it's going to be the gods on the other side of the rivers that your father served or the Amorites or you know, and the isms that should be wasms and all the weird stuff. And anyway, he's saying you're going to, you're going to serve them. Or do you want to serve the living God? And he says, hey, if it seems evil to serve God, then choose who you're going to serve. He doesn't say, guess what, guys? You could be neutral. Right. Because there is no neutral. So passive is is not choosing. Some people think, well, I don't serve the devil. It's like, well, if you don't choose Jesus, you serve the devil by default. You don't have to choose the devil. All you have to do is not choose Christ. And I think that's a great example of of how to not be passive in your life. If you're not actively doing good, you're not neutral. You, You are serving the purposes of the enemy. And so we have to be in God's army, doing good, promoting good, promoting the gospel, promoting the kingdom, working for our family. There's no kicking back calling it neutral. Men don't do that. It's evil. Men do do it, but they should not do it. A man of God cannot do that i tell you what uh get a good example of of not just being some freaking passive doormat uh up there with the mother truckers i'm talking about the canadian uh bay of rigs episode that's going down Mm -hmm. right now those guys were like all right you got to get vaxxed and now you got to wear a mask in your truck alone and uh they're like no it ain't gonna happen so we're gonna park you know 400 big ass 18 wheelers on a bridge and, and you're not going to buy, be able to buy or sell, you know? And um, well, I think it's interesting. But- a lot of people don't realize how many Canadians, cause we like to make some jokes about Canadians, give them a hard time, but how many Canadians are seriously patriotic, not just to Canada, but really towards the United States. And they believe in yeah. the constitution and freedom and, and the noisy ones on the news are the liberals um, and, and the lefties. But the reality is there are so many Canadians, Doug, that are super, super conservative. And, and you would swear they're from Arizona or Texas. I have a friend that has right. a tattoo and it's of the Canadian flag. And then it turns into the American flag and underneath it, it says brotherhood. Now that's a different kind of mentality. And I don't think a lot of people realize that there are, con- and those truckers are a perfect example of what I'm talking about. To the Canadians, that's not a surprise because they know how many people there are that are like that. Yeah, man. I'm, I mean, we're watching it in living color, and um, I've got some great friends in Canada uh, that are living in Ottawa right now. And you know what? The revolution's being televised. The truckers aren't being passive. The Canadians aren't. And uh, maybe uh, some of us Texans or Arizonans or, or uh, people from the great state of Florida can can get inspired by being even more active and more aggressive in a civil way, of course, against these draconian measures that they still are trying to attempt to shove down our backside. But I tell you what, um, you know, there was a time, Rich, think way back, like two years ago, where (laughs) we were passive. We did do the the stupid crap. Now, you didn't do it for long. Uh, I didn't do it for long. But when they told us to flatten the curve and you can't do this, you can't do that. We're like, okay, okay. And then all of a sudden they carried this stuff on for a long time. Now you and I got off that apple cart real quick. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people that, you know, are good Christians and I'm not being facetious. I think they are uh, good patriots. They were freaking passive. They allowed, uh, again, uh, uh, wicked kings and kingdoms to govern their decision-making process, and they passively took that bull crap. You know, well, yeah, like, they were okay, waiting. Right. I think people were waiting it out because they were in disbelief that that evil would triumph over good like that. And I, I really think they thought, well, we'll let the process and the system work it out. And then they saw right. that the system failed. And instead of waiting for good to triumph over evil, we need to be the good that triumphs over evil. And that's the difference. And, and like you said, Doug, I think it's really good people with good intentions that were thinking, Hey, you know, we'll just, we'll be reasonable. We'll be rational. 
there's no way this can last. And then the longer that that went, the more those people start standing up. And so, and, and like you said, it's not that we're trying to blame them, but it is an example that we can look at that we're all involved in at some level and say, hey, we need to be more active in resisting this type of stuff and not just government stuff. I'm talking about evil in the church, evil in the world. We need to stand up for righteousness and not just stand up and speak out with a social media post, stand up, raise your family to do the right thing, challenge the stuff in schools, challenge the stuff in your cities when they're trying to teach your children about sex at the age of six and seven and that kind of, we need no. to go and take a stand against those <clears throat> things. Yeah. Again, uh, the passive, uh, Satan tempts us to just let it happen. You yeah. know, just, just let, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. And the Christian's like, okay, here's no. my stuff. You know, no, they say this, Doug, the enemy comes to steal, kill, thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. Oh, it is what it is. Yeah. That's well, the vocabulary of a passive person right there. Man. Yeah. There's things that you can't change, but there's a whole lot of things you can. And let's get on with it. And let's stop crying and pointing at the big things that we have no power to change. And let's start getting on it on the smaller things in our life that we do have the power to change. And Jordan Peterson talks about that. People point and talk about things that they have no power to change, no influence to change because nothing's expected of them. But what about the things you can? We need to get active, leading our families, being involved in our church, being involved in our communities, and not just promote good things and be all positive, but resist evil. We need to resist evil. We need to say evil's evil. That's wrong. And people say, right. well, you're being a hater. Call it what you want, my brother. Yeah. Yeah, let's put our kids in masks. You know why the movie stars gallivant ah. at, at the Super Bowl, you know, maskless and stuff. That's why, again, I think it's cool that mom and dad's rocking up to these school meetings and these town hall meetings. They're being labeled by the Department of Homeland Security as domestic terrorists. Ah. And all they're doing is resisting the evil of the science rich that now, lo and behold, shock and awe, the science has changed and the and the realization of the mass being unnecessary is now revelatory on CNN. Doug, I have to read this to you. Um, our Warriors and Wildmen page on Facebook, I know this will come as a big surprise. We've known for a long time, but it's seriously restricted in its reach. People are not seeing it. People that follow it are not seeing it. People that, that click on it to see it first are not seeing it, right? And I, I looked up something because I got a notice that um, we are facing restrictions, Doug. Um, F you, Zuckerberg. You can't take part in groups for 21 days. So I clicked on that to see what it was talking about. And it was because in the Warriors and Wildmen group, um, the tribe, people were sharing information that was misinformation, so I looked up mm. to see what they were talking about. It was about COVID-19. Now, we're still restricted for things that even the left is saying were wrong. And our right. page is restricted. And there's a couple other reasons and whatever. But they're literally restricting our page because we don't stop people from saying what they want in our group. Because yeah. if we don't stop it, then we agree with it and we're promoting it. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is a group where people can talk it out. They have different ideas. The guys go no, on you there can't. and they talk about stuff and they disagree with each other. And then at the end of the day, it's all cool. Everybody might learn something. You know, it's not like typical social media where everybody just yells and screams and nobody changes. These are brothers in there talking about things, giving each other information. And they want us to regulate what they're saying. So not only yeah. do we want to regulate free speech, we want you to help us to regulate free speech so that we'll allow you to continue to have a version of free speech. Yeah, eat crap, Mark. Yeah, uh, I'm so I'm so glad I'm off that platform, buddy. I mean, I know I'm still on Instagram and stuff, but that's more art related. But man, I can't wait uh, till uh, Truth Social launches in earnest, and uh, hopefully, it will compete with Twitter and Facebook. And I'm telling you, Rich, I'm ready to start up, as Uncle Ted would say, a brand new electronic campfire and, and get to, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, inter interact with the boys and girls that I've been removed permanently from. Hey, let's all, so passivity, uh, this is kind of a technical uh, term for it. Pax passivity is a characteristic of someone who holds back and lets other people act. And uh, we can also, since we're Christians, throw in the demonic realm, obviously. To be passive is to abstain from resistance, Rich, and yield to external influences. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, here's here's something that's going to be a curveball for some folks. I think that there's good passivity, and I don't know if I could really even call it. Uh, uh, yeah, it might passivity. not be passivity. Yeah. So there's the there's the bad and the ugly. So um, uh, this one writer says that Je- uh, Jesus demonstrated this kind of passivity, the good kind, on the night that he was arrested. Uh, his disciples ready to fight, ready to kill. You know, Peter <laughs> heading that charge. And Christ willingly submitted to the abuse of his captors. Now, this this cat says that, that that's passive. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if that's passive, man. No, you know, that's, that's submitted. The, that's submission. He's in to, an active process to right. present himself theologically as the sacrifice. So yeah. as the sacrifice, no word was in his mouth. He was actively submitting himself to the Father, actively pursuing the path that would lead him to the cross, which is complete insanity. And so he was literally actively following the path that would get him killed. Sorry, that's not the definition of passivity. Yeah, I think this guy's in left field on that because can you imagine all, all the, God knows, you know, all the crap he has to eat, put down, you know, he could have called, you know, whole legions yep. of angels. He could have pulled out. He could have let Peter and the boys have at it with the sword fight. Doug, and he he's was pushing all that stuff down, submitting to becoming the sacrifice and the wrath of God. So that's to me, even though it looks like, oh, I'm letting you do this. And that's passive. It's like, no, I, I think that's active. Like you said, yeah, submission, obedience. The Bible says that all of the power of the Godhead dwelt bodily in Jesus. That if somebody takes a minute to think about that, that should blow your mind apart because he fills the universe, but the universe itself cannot contain him. But all of that power is in Jesus's body. And he chooses to accept our punishment. He chooses to quietly go and accept all that was required because of our sin. I think that would be the opposite of passivity. I think it's impossible to even. Right. Now, he might have been quiet, but he was following the plan of the father, not of Pilate. Yeah. In regards to like um, uh, personal slights and insults, uh, according to Matthew 5, I think it's verse 39, something like that. When when people slap you in the cheek, give them the other cheek, when they curse you and insult you, you know, let it ride, water off a duck's back. Uh, again, you know, this, this cat is viewing that as passivity, but I don't think that that is. That's incredible that's, strength. When you, you have know, the, that's, pa- well, Doug, no, exactly, let, me, let me break man. that down real quick. If you have, if you don't have the power to do anything about it and you get slapped in the face and you take it because you can't do anything about it, well, that's being passive. But if you have the power to do something about it and you choose not to, to follow the the Bible, to follow a higher code. That's not passive. That's holy that restraint. Incredible yeah. strength. Yeah. That that's laying yeah. down and dying to self and trusting in the power of God to show a witness and a testimony. But if and and sometimes on the out, outside you can make it look like what you want. But the truth is on the inside, if you know that you could do something but you choose not to, then you're giving glory to God. And that's that's also not passivity. That's strength. Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, <laughs> when when you're able to go there and you don't, um, I wouldn't say that, again, most people think, ah, eh, you know, he's being a pussy. It's like, no, he's not, because he or she could weigh into that arena and clean everybody's clock, you know, with a debate or a physical altercation. But instead, they choose, you know, to walk away and, right. uh, and to fight another day. <laughs> Well, here's, yeah. a, here's a great verse on passivity. James 4, 17. Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it's sin. I don't think there's any way you could justify passivity in the requirement or at least in even knowing what the good was that needed to be done. If you sit back and sit out, then the Bible says it's sin. It doesn't say uh, it's a mistake or a weakness. It's not a weakness. Right. It's sin. Yeah. And again, you know, nobody sees passivity as sin. Yeah, you can bystand, you know, ecclesiastical 
malfeasance, the church, you know, turning into some kind of social club. Eh, it's not my problem. You can see culture, you know, right, right in front of your eyes. You can see friggin' Marxist radicals hijack the nation. Yep. And there you are, Dudley Punch, God, not doing diddly squat. And you think you're a good Christian? No. According to James, you frickin' sinned, you know? And, and remember, folks, when, when uh, the biblical writers say sin, that's to do the will of the enemy of God. So when you're right. sinning, you're doing the will of Satan against uh, our loving creator. So well, we're co- here's, no- a, here's a couple of verses I'm thinking of that go exactly with that. So is salt passive? No. We're supposed to be the salt of the world. Is light passive? No. Absolutely active, right? Um, occupy till I come. Does that Take allow dominion. for any passivity it's not impossible Uh -uh. those are things that christians that were commanded to be and commanded to do and there's no way that you can add passivity to those things yeah look at uh paul uh first first thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing you know there you go it's like it's like oh this stuff is just happening in my life well are you on the prayer stick are you getting after it in regards to you know volleying uh the imprecatory psalms uh are you are you doing uh, what God told you to do? Rushing his throne where you got 24-7, 365 access. Uh, he's also told us in 2 Timothy 4 that we're to preach the word, whether it's uh, uh, in season or out, whether it's loved or hated, we're to do that. We're to encourage one another, Hebrews 3. We're to love one another, 1 Peter 1. Flee from sexual, sexual immorality, 1 Corinthians 6. Honor your mom and dad. Ephesians they're all six. active they're all action yeah it's all well, it's all action jackson but man. somebody nonetheless is nevertheless is going to email me and say what about the verse that says be still and know that i am god does it say yeah, take done. a nap know that i'm god you know um when the people of god were coming under attack from three different armies that were massively coming against them the lord said Hey, this is what I want you to do. Put the worshipers out front, go out there and then stand in the cliffs and behold the salvation of your God. He didn't say, Hey guys, eat lunch. Forget about it. I got this one. They didn't fight in the war, but God required them to walk out in faith and stand right there in front of the army that was coming. That's action. That's waiting on God actively in faith, waiting on God, doing what he says because he wanted them to know where the dead dudes were because the Bible says it took them three days to pick up all their gold and, and, and all the bounty that these guys were carrying with them, right? And so God is going to require you in waiting to be active in faith. Um, right. Wait on the Lord. Um, be still. All those things are active. Those things are not passive. It's, it doesn't right. say go to sleep, forget about it. Yeah, when I'm waiting on the Lord, uh, I'm praying because those are the means uh, to his end. You know, the God who yep. has our destiny and our end and our purpose also is ordained, you know, the means to that end, which is prayer, the sacraments, uh, worship, corporate gathering. So like you said, it's not just twiddling your thumb type crap. You're, you're feeding your spirit. You're being patient uh, for God's timing. You're doing due diligence, all the work, all the preparation, all the planning that we as fallen critters are called to do. And then when all is said and done, stand and, and, stand. and wait. Yeah. And wait for him to move. Love it. Yeah. Let's go into uh, the next topic in the next podcast. Rich, we're going to talk about the temptation to do good and not great. Because that is a big old satanic scheme, my brother. But first and foremost, as we wrap this show on passivity up and Satan's temptation for us to be a, a freaking doormat to his devices, what do the Warriors and Wild Men listener, what do they need to do, big dog? They need to go to warriorsandwildmen.com. Subscribe. It's free. And just like we were saying on the podcast, it's important to do that because on some of the social media platforms, they are ratcheting back our reach. Even people that are following us and choosing to see our stuff first, they're not seeing our posts and materials. And so if you want to stay, be sure to stay connected, um, subscribe. Like I said, it's free. You get a couple emails a week. Uh, We don't send you spam or fill your inbox with a bunch of garbage, but we'll keep you posted on what's going on. You can still listen wherever you listen, but make sure to subscribe. And then if you want to help support the ministry, Go to the war chest at warriorsandwildmen.com. 
Um, anything that you donate on that is tax deductible. We'll send you the information on that. For those that are doing it, you guys are making it happen, man. We're thankful for you guys. Warriors and Wild Men, out.